Okay. Write down the integral for the z coordinate of the center of mass. Center of mass. of the half sphere bounded by z equal to square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. That's the half sphere. Uh, uh, because the, the sphere, the sphere's <coughs> center of mass is located on the z-axis. I know that the, the x and y coordinates of the center of mass is, is uh, 0, so you just need a z-coordinate. Okay? And it's, uh, there's something lacking in this question. I should say uh, the, the thing has uniform density. Yes? Was that of center of mass of half sphere? Half sphere? Bounded, BDD, bounded by. I just write BDD for bounded. Okay, and uh, let's just write down the answer, uh, the, the integral in terms of cylindrical and spherical, and I'll leave the calculation to you, okay? All right, so how do we get the Z bar? Oh, yeah, so I, I, I forgot to uh, finish my sentence. I meant that uh, I should either say find the centroid or at least a center of mass, assuming that it has uh, constant density? uniform density. Yeah, uniform density. Uh, because uh, if, if it's not uniform density, then you have to include the, the row somewhere. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's say z, z bar is, we know that for centroid, it's uh, 1 over the volume times the integral, and we're, we're basically taking the average of the z values, right? z dv over this half sphere. That's what we want. Now let's first try to write down this integral in terms of cylindrical coordinates. And remember, in cylindrical coordinates, we're using r, theta, and, and z. So when you have x and y, that has to be converted into r and theta. <coughs> and uh, the formulas to convert x and y into r and theta are x equal to r cosine theta, y equal to r sine theta, z equal to z, that doesn't change, and then r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. This one is in addition, but it appears often enough that uh, it's like a shortcut. You, you would want to use this, okay? All right, so for this one, that's z equal to square root of 4 minus x squared plus y squared. And once you write this in this way, you clearly see x squared plus y squared. What do we do? R squared, right? So uh, that means I can rewrite the equation of the sphere as z equal to square root of 4 minus r squared. All right, that's important because if you think about the way to represent the integral as uh, cylindrical and you're painting upwards, the, the surface that you're beginning with at is your xy plane, which is given by z equal to zero. And the, when you go up, upwards, the surface that's bounding the, up, uh, or the, the top part is actually this sphere, right? So when you complete the most interior part, you're going to end up having uh, z. When you do dz, it will start from 0, and it will end at 4 minus r squared. So that, that completes the, the surface to surface part. Remember I, I said uh, when you understand the spherical integration, or triple integration, you should really think of it as a surface to surface. And when you integrate that out, 
you end up with a double integral, which is curve to curve and point to point. Right? So once you're done with the surface part, then it becomes easy because after that, you're just trying to represent this two-dimensional object after the flattening thing. So, OK, so think about this. If you had this half sphere and you flattened it by integrating, what do you get in the two? You get the full circle, right? So what you're getting in, in here, you want to represent this full circle. Okay? And uh, for polar coordinates, uh, you're supposed to use R, D, R, D theta. Right? And I have to figure out what to put here <coughs> To, to correspond with R and theta. So let's think about it. Now, what's the radius of that circle? Well, this, is, this sphere has radius, what? Two. two. It has a square root of four is two, so it, it has radius two. If it was nine, it will be having a radius three and so on. So, okay? so it's a radius two circle, radius two disk, and R goes from where to where? Every ray that you draw from the center, R goes from? Zero, zero to two. Zero to two, okay. And then all the, all the angles, angles are what? What's the minimum angle and what's the maximum angle? Zero to two. Zero to two. Okay, so those are the values of R and theta. Now we uh, go back and put, put the Z value in, then uh, it's D. Uh, and you, usually you put all the functions inside, right? So instead of writing dz, r, d, r, d, theta, you should put the r inside. And you get zr, no, no, sorry. zr, dz, d, r, d, theta, with z going from 0 to square root of 4 minus r squared. And then you have to divide by the volume. And now let's try to calculate the volume of the half sphere. What's the volume of the half sphere? It's uh, we know that the full sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed, right? And because r is 2 in our context, and I'm taking half of it, this will be 2 thirds. So it'll be, uh, the volume will be 2 thirds pi times 2 cubed, which is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So 16 over 3 pi is rv. So we can put that in here, 16 over 3. And that's the answer. That's the, uh, I mean, that, that's the integral in terms of cylindrical coordinates. Now let's try to, to represent the integral in terms of spherical. Now when you do the spherical, you're trying to <coughs> represent the, the, you're trying to paint or, or fill in this. Yeah, you, you have a question? Yeah, um, can you go over how you got two thirds again? The line, two thirds five times. Oh, it's, it's a, if I multiply, this is the whole whole sphere, right? Yeah. If you uh, multiply one half okay. of the sphere, because it's a half, mm -hmm. one half and four cancels to give you two, reduces to two thirds. Okay. okay. All right. So that's why we had this. Okay. So going back, uh, uh, trying to represent this in, in uh, spherical coordinate means we're trying to fill this volume up by rays coming from the origin, right? Now, if the rays are coming from the origin, where does it hit? It, it stops at 2, because this is a sphere of radius 2. So it will start at 0. All the rays will start at 0, and it will stop at 2. Okay. And then it will be, uh, yeah, it will always be 2. So if you write down the integral, uh, here's what we do. Uh, first, this thing, including the R, that, that's what we call dv, right? Now, in spherical coordinates, what does that turn into? <laughs> Rho oh, squared oh, sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Right? And uh, because theta is always the same as the cylindrical, I can just copy the theta value here at 0 of 2 pi. OK. And then uh, <coughs> we, from the discussion that we just had, rho goes from where to where? 0 to 2. Zero two? Two. 2. OK. Now the only thing that's remaining is what is the phi? 
Uh, at the North Pole, the North, North Pole, the phi value is zero. zero. Uh, at the equator, the phi value is it's 90 degrees from the North Pole, so it's pi over 2. And that's as far as it can go, right? Phi, the, the smallest value of phi is 0. The maximum value of phi is pi over 2 when it comes out <coughs> to the equator. So can't, this can't exceed all pi, right? Yeah, yeah uh, so phi, phi should, ideally, phi should always be between 0 to pi. But uh, there are some rare occurrences where you limit the theta to between 0 to pi and let the phi go all the way around to describe the entire sphere. That's not uh, ideal. You don't want to do that, but that it's possible to do that. But usually, if you, if you think, think in this way, your phi should always be between 0 to pi. Okay. It should never be exceeding pi. Okay. So in this case, it's 0 to pi over 2. And then uh, this value is still the same. Oh, uh, there's one thing we still have to change, z. This is no good, right? Because uh, in spherical coordinate system, z is not allowed. You have to convert this into rho or phi or theta, or a mixture of those. And again, I don't remember what the formula for z is, I always remember this picture. Uh, the picture is that this angle is from the North Pole, which is phi. This is a z-axis, so this is z. And this is the distance from the origin to the point, so that's what we call rho. And this is the distance from the z-axis to the point, so this is what we call r. From this picture, we know that z is, rho, z, since z is adjacent to phi, it must be what? Z is? If you have adjacent, Sokoto says, use what? Cosine. Cosine is adjacent of the hypotenuse, right? So you multiply rho times cosine phi. That's the value of z. And that should be replacing this one, OK? So it should be rho cosine phi. Or if you want to simplify, when you actually get to integrate this, you should first multiply rho and rho squared to get rho cubed. Okay? And after that, you can calculate. 